I'm Mara Menzies. And I'm John Mukeni Namai. We are both storytellers from Kenya. Together with the meteorologists, we travel to the climate front lines of northern Kenya to discover how people there are using indigenous knowledge to adapt to climate change. This podcast, Listening to the Rainmakers, shares what we learned on our journey. Episode 1, Setting Out. This is a braided story, woven together from many threads. It's about climate change, and storytelling, and indigenous knowledge, and governments, and conversations between science and traditional knowledge in the Global South. At its simplest, it follows the journey of two Kenyan storytellers to meet some of the East African communities most affected by climate change. My name is Mara Menzies. As a storyteller, I'm hugely interested in people's relationship with nature and the climate, and stories which share knowledge about how to live and thrive in different environments. And my name is John Mukeni Namai. I'm a storyteller from Nairobi, Kenya's capital city. In the UK, we're often said to be obsessed by the weather. Where I live part of the year in Edinburgh, if I need to know when to hang my laundry out, I just go online to the Met Office or BBC forecast and get an hour-by-hour prediction that's pretty reliable. But I also have Kenyan nationality and spend a lot of my year there. In some parts of Kenya and other parts of sub-Saharan Africa, which are the most affected by extremes of climate like droughts and floods, there is no accurate scientific weather forecast or people don't have access to it. And with the climate crisis advancing, this is more and more of a problem. How do people manage without this in remote areas? In Nairobi, rain is frequent and weather forecasts are accurate. Mara and I travelled to northern Kenya to regions of Turkana and West Pokot. We were excited to meet communities who are living in much harsher climates. Throughout the trip, we gathered many stories about the Turkana people's culture and how they make decisions about where to take their animals, how to live their lives. We are also seeking answers to some difficult questions. How can a storyteller like me or Mara help build bridges between scientific weather forecasts and elders, women, young people in remote communities? In a time of climate crisis, what else can storytellers contribute to climate adaptation in frontline communities? And how can we bring their perspectives to global audiences? We didn't find definitive answers to those questions, but many promising beginnings. We traveled with Kalista Swachana, a meteorologist from ICPAC, the Meteorological Organization for East Africa. Kalistas has been on many field trips like this before, but never traveled with storytellers. He wondered if storytelling might open up different kinds of conversations in remote communities. All of us were particularly interested in the role that indigenous traditional knowledge is playing to help people cope and adapt, and especially the rainmakers of the Turkana people. Rainmakers are traditional weather forecasters throughout the Turkana region, which straddle several national borders. We witnessed rainmaking rituals ourselves in northern Kenya, and we've also been in close communication with journalist Joseph Ngordeng in South Sudan, where rainmakers have tremendous significance and power. But first, Joseph explained just how difficult climate change is making life for farmers in South Sudan. If, if people cultivate, it is very hard for, uh, for crops to, to grow well. And then uh, from there, it uh, affects the, the communities. You find a, a household having very little uh, area that they have planted crops in. And this is the only area that people can survive. There are no other source of income to the society. If you farm and then they are not successful because of climatic problems, you are now subjected to a hunger gap. So the, the things that help communities here in such a situation, someone can go to the forest and get the wild fruits. Others take the leaves of the trees. There are some trees that are eatable. 
uh, people take those leaves, uh, the leaf trees, and uh, they eat from it, or the roots, the roots of some trees are also eatable. With the wandering part, a family household may go a full day without eating from morning up to the next morning without having eaten something. So uh, that part is really actually one of the area and it is caused by the climatic change. And because of that, people uh, are not well aware of how and when to cultivate and uh, what type of the soil to use and what type of crops to also plant at a certain period of time. So this one with the only uh, farmers relying on the, on the information the rainmakers gives, it is, uh, you find it is, uh, it is making it difficult for uh, every community to have access to the information because the rainmakers could be only found in uh, some certain villages and they are not accessing other areas. The government is not putting more efforts on the local radio stations and also uh, on the national radio stations for people to get information regarding the weather. Uh, only the weather update today, the weather is like this and like that, but information on, on how the farmers can really actually have news of what to do in their daily life. The, the hunger gap in South Sudan is serious. According to the UN uh, WAP report, 7, 7, 7 million people by the end of the year will go hungry, uh, will have severe uh, food shortage. And you know our country has only less than 11 million people. So if 7, 7, popular, 7 million are, are in that gap, and two point something are displaced in the, in, 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 to neighboring countries, so what do you expect? The number that remains? Serious. In northern Kenya, we saw the extremes of climate are affecting people in similar ways. Here's an extract from my audio diary on the trip. The place is worse hit with the climate crisis, uh, dried up riverbeds, we could see kids on the riverbeds digging deep into the sand to collect water. Most of the kids around complain of, of hunger. And uh, one striking image was while we were, we were today, the Lokiriyama Festival happens near a, a riverbed and everything surrounds the riverbed. Very, very interesting because it's a huge riverbed and uh, they say that uh, when the water comes from the mountains in Uganda, it comes with a huge force that even when a car is caught up there, the water has a, the water opens the bolts of the of the tiles and carries the car away and uh, leaves it a scrap. It carries all types of, it carries rocks, uh, huge trees, bringing them down through the lager. Like, like the water is the lager, it brings all those trees. And that is the time that the, the people in the, they are experience water and they're able to harvest the water. But the water is just for a few, like one day and then the place ties up. It's a marginalized area, hugely marginalized. And the tropical there, the climate there is tropical. You'll find shrubs, the madenge tree, the thorny, thorny, thorny bush tree scattered all over the air, area, no grass. Having to cope with such droughts and floods without any kind of focusing will be unimaginably difficult. But a lack of metrology doesn't mean no focusing is going on. In the next episode, we tell what we learned on our trip about the craft of indigenous forecasters or rain makers. Thanks to our project partners, Adverse Kamba and ICPAC, and the project funders, the British Council.